Hey guys, how's it going? Allie Marie here. Back in 2014, I became a licensed massage and craniosacral therapist through the Kalamazoo Center of the Healing Arts. If you're not familiar with their program, they focus a lot on both Eastern medicine and Eastern spirituality. During my time there was when I was converting to the Catholic faith, so I had to spend a lot of time with my brother who was in the seminary at the time to discern what parts of what they were teaching I could integrate into my practice and what parts I should avoid. Um, you know, things like chakras, crystals, uh, essential oils that we're going to chat about here today, we're all kind of on the questionable edge, whereas looking at specifically Eastern medicine like acupressure or acupuncture took a different variable into um, what could be integrated, right? So, so differentiating medicine versus spirituality. So today I wanna to talk about essential oils. They are very, very popular, and I always struggled a little bit with them due to the gospel reading that we will hear here on Sunday and several other miracles performed by Jesus. So this Sunday, we see Jesus heal a deaf and mute man with his spit. He did not need some special flower from Indonesia. He did not need a particular plant from South America. He did not need, you know, lavender from the fields of France. He didn't need anything in particular but his spit. We see other situations, right, where he heals a blind man with mud. And and I've always looked at that and said, why would I need this very particular type of essential oil or this very special essential oil from this particular region to help heal somebody's body when Christ's power and the Holy Spirit, we are temples of the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit resides within me, when I can um, and ask for the Holy Spirit's intercession for a session when I'm working with a client and, um, and, and find healing through Christ, through God. And so, so that's like the very first piece of essential oil is that we only need the Holy Spirit to have healing. We do not need special oils. However, in the Catholic faith, we do see the usage of essential oils, right? We have frankincense and, frankincense and myrrh, we use incense, we have um, chrism oil when people are confirmed, there's oil placed on the forehead. We don't not use essential oils. However, the oils themselves do not carry supernatural properties. It's due to the blessing that they undergo that there is a spiritual property or a spiritual or supernatural nature to these oils. In a similar sense with those essential oils, they are rooted in a spirituality. They are typically associated with like a new age mentality. Young Living Oils specifically, they have associations with new age philosophy, which desperately and, and critically contradicts what the Catholic faith stands for. And there are so many conversations we could have about this. And, and if you're interested, I'm more than happy to, to go into this deeper in future videos. Um, obviously, yes, New Age is going to come up at some point in these discussions. But, um, but if you're specifically about essential oils, like it's okay to use them. You know, if you really like this, the smell of lavender, I'm not saying don't burn candles in your home. I'm not saying that it's a mortal sin if you, you know, put a little bit of lavender in a diffuser. That's not it at all. It is utilizing them for healing. Again, here with this, I'm not recommending that if you're at the grocery store with somebody and they're just talking to you and they're like, yeah, I've had this chronic back pain forever. You say, oh, well, here, hold on. Let me spit on you. <laughs> Please don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. But I'm also saying do not recommend to them, oh, my gosh, you need to get this eucalyptus oil. This is, this is going to heal you. You just rub it on there every single night before bed, and this is like it is going to heal you. When we start looking to essential oils for healing properties and recommending them to others as a as a carrier to healing, um, that is when we, we start an, entering into kind of a danger zone. Additionally, with this um, with this reading from this weekend, there's a homily that St. Jerome shared about it that it said, Christ's spittle is the perfect doctrine that proceeds from his mouth. It enhances our vision and brings us progressively to the knowledge of God. So when we seek Christ for physical healing, when we're seeking the Holy Spirit for that physical healing instead of a physical object, um, that is like 
our spiritual and physical natures are totally entwined. Um, I typically view our my spirit as my personality, as what I'm like exuding into the world. So, so what, we want that to perfectly reflect the Holy Spirit to be speaking um, as as Christ's like vessel, as the vessel of the Holy Spirit, and and so we want to be looking to Christ for that or the saints, right? In the Catholic faith, we have relics. So when I was thinking about this, I'm like, well, how does essential oils, like how can I explain this in a way that doesn't downplay, say, water from Lourdes, right? Why is that water supposedly more miraculous or cause these healings? Why do people travel to Lourdes? They take pilgrimages to Lourdes. Um, why, why is that okay, but it wouldn't be okay to utilize an essential oil? And it really boils down to the spiritual nature of what it is. Lourdes is the site of a Marian apparition. Like St. Bernadette witnessed this beautiful woman appear to her. And, and Mary, the mother of God, was there. The mother of Christ was there. And she bestowed her blessing upon this water. And so it's not the water in and of itself, but rather who placed that blessing there similar to relics, right? Like like the woman who bled for 12 years, she simply touched Christ's robe and she was instantly healed. So when we have relics, when we have pieces of a holy person that we know is unified with God currently um, due to the, the steps that the church takes, when we have those pieces, there is a supernatural grace that is within those objects due to who was associated with it, which is through Christ. So Christ being that backbone of what we're looking for um, in, in that um, synchronicity of the object that we are um, seeking to experience healing. I hope that all makes sense. I hope that that is congruent enough. And it's a very in-depth topic. Like I said, if you're interested in like in further resources, I'm more than happy to supply different places that you could look to uh, see. I would recommend that if you are going to pursue essential oils, I would research the company that you're purchasing them from and be sure that they're not associated with new age philosophies. It's a very simple Google search. Just type in, you know, young living and new age philosophy, right? Like it's very easy to find out whether or not they are actually rooted, rooting themselves in something that is contrary to the Catholic faith because we, we really, in the world, we need to be so careful because demonic spirits abound. And I know that sounds really crazy, but um, it's, it's really not. And I hope that we can all just recognize the work that Satan is doing here in the world because um, because he, he is, he is the prince of this world. And we have to be on constant guard against allowing those spirits into our lives in any way, shape or form, because he does come to kill, steal and destroy. And if we put our faith in essential oils, if we put our faith in anything that is not rooted in Christ, it's not going to open our eyes to spiritual fulfillment. It's not going to bring us that, that deep sense of peace or joy or those fruits of the Holy Spirit that we look for, which are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These things cannot be attained in any way, shape, or form without the Holy Spirit himself. So let me know your thoughts on that um, or if you have any further questions about essential oil or massage or anything. Um, I'm more than happy to dialogue just here on this one or do a follow-up video if, if it so calls. So, so God bless you. Thanks for tuning in and we hope to see you this weekend.